TV audience. I'm Danielle Inez, Director of Innovation, sitting in for our usual host, Kelly Roberts. Today we have a very special episode dedicated to the Shelby County Women of Black History. I'm joined today by two inspirational ladies who've dedicated their lives to breaking barriers, shattering glass ceilings, and making it easier for the people who come after them. First, we have the Honorable Deidre Malone. Deidre is the current president of the National Women's Political Caucus and is CEO of Carter Malone Group. She made history in 2008 when she became the county's first ever black chairwoman of the Shelby County Board of Commissioners. Since then, she's continued her legacy as a public servant, helping to guide the mission for such organizations like Leadership Memphis, the Women's Foundation, and the NAACP. Ms. Deidre Malone, thank you for being here. Thank you, Danny. We're also joined by the Honorable Mr. Clay Bibbs. When Ms. Malone's tenure as chairwoman ended in 2009, we did not see another black woman serve as chairwoman of the county commission until September of 2023, when Ms. Clay Bibbs was selected by her peers. Chairwoman Clay Bibbs is a former member of the Memphis Shelby County School Board, where she served for two terms. She was elected to her role on the county commission in 2022. Since then, Ms. Clay Bibbs has lobbied for livable wages for working families, for health care, including a new campus for Regional One, and of course, for public education, helping pave the way for two new MSCS high schools to be built in the next couple of years. Chairwoman Clay Bibbs, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So ladies, I'm going to jump straight into the conversation. You both have shattered and continue to shatter glass ceilings. Um, but Ms. Malone, during your tenure, you became the county's first ever black chairwoman for our county commission. We'd never seen that before. So can you take a moment and just describe to us what the experience was like leading up to that moment in your career as, it, as well as what it felt like to serve as the first? It was absolutely amazing. Um, I did not know that it would happen, but at the time the chair was, I wanna say Chairman uh, Joe Ford and Chairman Ford and I were close, and I told Chairman Ford, I said, you know, we need to make this happen. At that time, um, that was the term that the commission turned majority democratic, so we had the votes to make it happen. And we were able to pull together the votes. Um, I had served as the first woman to chair the budget committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so with that, um, you know, five years in, it was time. Um, but I knew that the weight was gonna be on me because mm -hmm. no one had done it before in terms of an African-American female. We had had maybe two white women, mm -hmm. um, but not a black woman. So um, I felt the pressure, but I was up for it. Of course you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was up for it. All right, and so Chairwoman Clay Bibbs, your experience was a little different. So you served as the chairwoman of MSCS's school board twice um, before mm -hmm. you came over to the county commission. but. You obviously knew that this moment was very special. I think her theme song for the moment was Who Runs the World, Girl. Yes. <laughs> and so talk to us a little bit about what that experience felt like for you personally, as well as how you believe it might have inspired young girls and women today. Absolutely. I, uh, my experience was a little different because, A, I knew it was possible because I knew what Deidre did. Mm -hmm. So for me, I had someone to look forward uh, to as a mentor, as a friend, uh, as a sword, to just be able to help guide through the moment. But I also knew that the weight of it was really heavy because I had served with a lot of smart colleagues, you know. Mm -hmm. So to be able to say that I wanted to go for it, it meant that I knew it meant a lot, a lot of long nights, a lot of mm -hmm. hard work, a lot of intentionality in order for it to happen. So, um, but the weight of the work was not the thing that held me back because, of course, uh, serving as board chair for the school board for two years, that budget at the time was bigger than actually mm -hmm. the county mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. I wasn't scared about the work aspect of it. I think it was more the weight of understanding, um, making sure my colleagues had opportunities to move forward as well and also kind of bring us together as much mm -hmm. as possible um, as a body. I appreciate that. So when you ladies both talk about leadership and what it meant for you guys to serve in those roles, um, I have to ask you the question, you know, did you all ever feel like 
people expected for you to be a magician. You know, they call us Black Girl yeah. Magic. Oh, absolutely. And so they, they bring us into these spaces. So, so I'd love to hear something about that. But then also, as women leading men, did you guys ever have experiences where you felt like you weren't treated with the same level of respect that maybe your male peers might have experienced? And I'll start with, I'll start with you, Chairwoman Clay Biz. <laughs> I'll say this. So it's the year is 2024. Mm -hmm. The reality of it is microaggressions still very much exist. Mm -hmm. I've been in rooms where I know for a fact that uh, some of my male colleagues, who some who have been chairs before, some who are not, where they get called first. Mm -hmm. The respect mm -hmm. happens just naturally at the gate because uh, of them being male. Uh, and that's not a color thing. That's simply a gender thing. So I've had to, and especially, I will be very honest, across the state of Tennessee. You know, I do a lot of work um, when we go to um, Tennessee County Commissioners Association. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting to see the rooms because very often I am often probably definitely the only black person in the room often, but more importantly, maybe, uh, maybe one of two women mm -hmm. that are in the room. So you see it happening. So you have to figure out how to kind of maneuver, but also you can't let it get to you. Mm -hmm. So when I was chair, it was a little different from me because um, term limits were in existence. So there were only two mm -hmm. Democrats that could come back. That was me mm -hmm. and Joe. Mm -hmm. And that was the only reason I came back because I was only going to be a one-termer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so I had to teach a lot. Um, we had a whole new bunch of county commissioners. And then I wouldn't let them kind of mm -hmm. talk crazy to me. Because um, I, I would talk crazy back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what about you, Ms. Malone? Have you ever felt like you were paying a tax for having the audacity to be ambitious, black, and female? All the time. I mean, you know, being elected and then owning a business, I didn't realize, I think I was a little naive, Danielle, because um, people would try and attack my business because of my public service. Mm -hmm and affect my livelihood. And so if I did not have clients that were new and understood my work and knew the value of my business, then I probably would have been able, I would have had to shut down my business. Mm -hmm. um, so public service has a price. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you know women and men need to understand that. Um, but it is a great thing to do to be able to give back to your community. Um, but it does come with a cost. I thank you both so far for just being open and honest um, and candid in this conversation. Um, so when we come back, we're going to talk about the weight of being the first woman, sometimes the only woman, or on occasion, one of just a few women in decision-making roles. Um, we'll be back right after a brief break. Coming up. How do y'all stay so sane? <laughs> it is a hard, you have to juggle, but at the same time, I think, um, whenever I am in any situation. I'm still me. Shelby County, Tennessee was founded as an agricultural hub for the South. We're now an ag tech center for the world. We're on a mission to prepare the nation's next generation of leaders by providing world-class education, world-renowned healthcare, and a strong infrastructure to support the world's best businesses. Shelby County is more than a place for people to live. It's a destination where families can thrive. We welcome diversity, we celebrate our culture, and we honor our history. Welcome to Shelby County, or like we love to say, welcome home. Welcome back to One TV's Shelby County Women of Black History. I've been talking to the county's first black chairwoman of the county commission, Deidre Malone, as well as the second and current black chairwoman, Miska Clay Bibbs. Let's jump right back in. All right, so I am not going to ask you two ladies how y'all do it all. Just spoiler <laughs> alert, everyone. They take their own priorities and they put that into their life, you know, in this phase of their life, and they make their decisions from there. Um, but I am going to ask a question that I think women in leadership roles all want to know, especially as we've had this conversation today. How do y'all stay so sane? <laughs> so, you know... Ms. Malone, you are a wife, you're a grandma, you're a member of a sorority, a very active member of a sorority in lots of organizations around town. You're the president of a national political caucus. Like, how, how do you stay, stay sane while you do it all? It's hard, <laughs> but you have to prioritize the work. I think family always has to come first. Um, when I was elected, my sons were younger, 
and I often now ask them as adults, was I there enough for you? Mm -hmm. And my youngest son said to me, Mom, you were in the county commission, but you were the president of the PTA mm -hmm. at Central High School. Mm -hmm. So you have to prioritize it, um, you know, the business. And then, you know, I'm going to retire in a few years and be a great grandma. <laughs> I a better grandma. A day. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, family has to come first, then the business. Um, but if you can juggle it all, do it because it's well worth it. Awesome. So, Chairwoman Clay Bibbs, you started campaigning in a pandemic. You landed mm -hmm. on a county commission where everybody doesn't always agree and interests mm -hmm. don't always align. Um, but I've really, really admired how you've navigated all of this work. So how do you separate your personal identity from your political identity? Or in other words, how do you stay sane? Um, number one is my faith. I stay really grounded in the fact that I am here to do um, the work that I know God called me to do. Um, and if I didn't stay grounded in that, hence I would be insane. But I think <laughs> too... Um, Deidre's point is, it's for me, it's God first, mm -hmm. then it's my son uh, as a single mother who had a very strong support system mm -hmm. that I'm very thankful for. So I make a lot of time to make sure I love on that support system because they help get me through. Uh, when I was on the school board, my son, uh, my first year, actually I was elected three terms, so my son was in sixth oh, grade. Me. Yeah, <laughs> sixth grade. You know, you know, we started a brand new charter, so I started a brand new school district. Um, he was in sixth grade, and, but my question to him was when I decided to do that work was, are you going to be okay with this? Mm -hmm. He said yes, but not really understanding what he was saying yes to. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, now that he's 21, uh, I prioritize him by making sure that we have our morning calls, we do our evening mm -hmm. check-ins, mm -hmm. all of the things, but he's very clear on there sometimes that I was not able to be there for him in yeah. the way that he needed additional support. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm very thankful for the support system that I had because I have to love on them because they stay showing up for me and him mm -hmm. exactly. in, in that way. Um, but it is a hard, you have to juggle. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think um, whenever I am in any situation, I'm still me. Like, yes. I, you know, I have friends that say, um, they laugh at me because if I tell them a no and it's a hard no, they know it's a no. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm still the same person, whether it's me politically or whether it's me as a friend, whether it's me showing up in my, you know, career, because that's the other catch. Um, Deidre mentioned owning her own business, but sometimes people forget, although we're elected, you still have to have a job. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is part time work. <laughs> you know, so you still have to be able to show up mm -hmm. to be able to do that work as well. So I think for me, it's maintaining just my core in all situations. Awesome, awesome advice. So even in 2024, black women are breaking barriers and making history. Just recently, our city announced its first black woman president of the local transit authority. And within Shelby yes. County, our CIO, Sandra Perry, is the first black woman to hold that position. The same is true for our public defender's office, which is led by Phyllis Aluko, and our office of emergency management, which is led by Brenda Jones. All black women, all first. So with that in mind, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about what can we all do collectively and individually to make sure that our first aren't our only and aren't our last. How can we pay it forward for the next generation? You have to lift them up. You have to encourage them. You know, I think about when I was on the campaign trail, so many women and young women supported me. Um, they would call just to check on me. Because um, it's already hard now, and women can be tough on other women, mm -hmm. okay? And so we have to learn how to lift them up and encourage them. And when they're having a bad day, because in public service you don't have a bad day, mm -hmm. I will text Miska, how you doing? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So lifting them up and encourage them, encouraging them I think will be key. I absolutely agree with that. I think it's making sure that we do the small things because those small things do add up to become bigger things. When you see someone who's a first or someone who's broken a barrier mm -hmm. uh, as a black woman, um, women period, be able to just encourage them around, hey, you got this. Hey, look, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. Hey, you want to go grab a coffee? Do you want to go to lunch? Let's right. talk. All of those things that oftentimes that people think are small things really are big things because mm -hmm. they help you remain grounded and also give you a little extra push to keep you going. 
and, and make you realize you do have a tribe yes. a women yes. that you know support you so show up and be a tribe a member of yeah. somebody's tribe yeah. yeah it's just you know point of personal privilege I've known both of these ladies for a while and so just listening to them talk you know this has been my experience um, and so I'm very very grateful for you guys Shelby County is very lucky um, to have y'all and I thank you both for joining us for this conversation today thank you very much thank you very much in just a moment, Mayor Lee Harris will join us to celebrate the 2024 Shelby County Women of Black History. I'm Mayor Lee Harris and really pleased uh, to be here for this part of the segment as we're honoring several individuals in Shelby County government. Uh, these are history makers who are part of the senior leadership team and also part of the historic uh, black women serving on the Shelby County Commission. Historically, we knew for decades there were only six black women having served on the Shelby County Commission. But today, right now, simultaneously, there are five women serving on the Shelby County Commission. In addition to that, we have our second black woman in history serving as the chair of the Shelby County Commission, Miska Clay Bibbs. It's been 15 years or more since the last black woman has served as chair of the Shelby County Commission, and that's way too long. But we can never too often celebrate the accomplishments of black women in Memphis and Shelby County. At the same time, we've got history makers among the senior, senior leadership team in my administration. Many of these women are serving in a capacity that uh, for the first time you see a black woman leading. And so it is uh, quite awe-inspiring and we're so fortunate to have them. They're multitaskers and they're team builders. And you just watch them as they work collectively to advance the interests of Memphis and Shelby County. They remind me of the African proverb that says a single spider can spin a web big enough to catch a fly. But if you get enough spiders together, they can spin a web big enough to catch a lion. And these women are indeed lion tamers. All right, let's see, at, at this time, I think I'd like to honor some of these women more specifically. First, I'm going to bring up our history makers on the Shelby County Board of Commissioners. And so I'll name them one at a time and ask them to come forward. First, the Honorable Shante Avant. Next, the Honorable Henry Brooks. Next, Honorable Miska Clay Bibbs. <laughs> Honorable Erica Sugarman. <laughs> and finally, Honorable Brittany Thornton. Uh, and also, Chair Emeritus Deidre Malone. <laughs> Next, I'd like to invite up for recognition the senior leaders uh, in the cabinet. And those include Public Defender Phyllis Aluko, <laughs> Deputy Chief Administrative Officer Dr. Lasagna Hall. Director of Innovation, Danielle Inez. <laughs> Director Homeland Security, Brenda Jones. <laughs> Director of IT, Sandra Perry. <laughs> Director of our Health Department, Michelle Taylor. <laughs> and Director of Finance, uh, Audrey Tipton. <laughs> Deputy Chief Administrative Officer Dorcas Young Griffin. <laughs> Thanks to all the incredible black women serving in Shelby County government in 2024 to advance the public interest and to serve all of us. We appreciate you and we celebrate your accomplishments. Thank you very much.
And as we honor the Shelby County women of black history, One TV would also like to thank colleagues across Shelby County government who planned Black History Month celebrations. Thank you.